Okay, this quarter was a lot. Um, to start, before watching this, please read the summary at the bottom of the homepage for a clearer understanding of kind of like what's happened this quarter. Um, so after reading this quarter, I was left feeling a little odd. I wasn't sure how to approach this under a literary lens, as with most things, but the more I thought of the story, I saw the best course of action would be to veer further from the isolated contents and rather them and the woman who made them. Shirley Jackson was born on December 14th, 1916, in San Francisco. Once married, she and her husband moved to New York, where they both worked for the New York Times. Her as a fiction author, and him as a writer for the talk of the town. She was often seen as loony, calling herself a practicing amateur witch. Writer Ruth Franklin was determined to clear her name after Judy Oppenheimer published her 1988 biography, Private Demons, which played up Jackson's gothic behavior. Franklin's book, A Rather Haunted Life, 2016, exposed the misogynistic critics of Jackson's time, and it became apparent that Shirley seemed to make a false persona to sell her novels, provoking and drawing the attention of many. Her books were testament to the proto-feminist movement writing about the everyday lives of American women fighting their way up the ladder. By reviewing the final quarter of the book under a biological and kind of historical lens, I find I can understand the motivations of the characters where I normally would be left astray and remiss. By bringing Jackson's perspective under the microscope, it becomes clear what the motivations held behind the characters and their actions. Jackson's phenomenal character writing comes from the tragedies of her past, having known many of those she writes about all too well. Her parents, affluent country club members, left a lot to be desired. Shirley often wrote stories of loneliness and isolation. Her mother, Geraldine, made it clear her disappointment in Shirley at a young age, wishing she was more feminine and naive. This type of relationship is a f this type of relationship is reflected in Eleanor and her late mother. Eleanor resents her mother, but whereas Eleanor's mother was sick, Shirley's was cruel. Nonetheless, they both were left with a hole, wanting to be filled with affection. Unfortunately, the abuse did not stop with her mother. Jackson's husband, Stanley Edgar Hyman, gaslit her into thinking her wants and needs for their relationship were unimportant and needy. Things such as monogamy and for him not to go on in detail about his exploits. Eventually, Hyman and her mother combined were a constant pressure in her mind, leading her to a steady reliance on alcohol, tranquilizers, and amphetamines. The mockery and disrespect she endured in her life, for better or for worse, led her to write beautifully vulnerable characters who at the hands of temptations could do nothing but cave in. Because of Eleanor's past, she is so easily drawn to Hill House to the point where she finds solace within its walls. Within a week, she is calling Hill House her home despite the horrors it brings at night, the horrors of which she is most often the target. This counterintuitive behavior demonstrated by Eleanor as the story progresses is similar to that of Jackson's. She, after years of mental abuse from her mother, marries a man who she knows degrades and disrespects her. The longing of familiarity, however cruel, is a theme in both Jackson and Eleanor's lives. A theme that damages and corrodes the respect and confidence they hold for themselves. It is important to understand and truly take into account from whom the story is being told. To understand who in their life they model their characters off of and why. If we weren't to bring Jackson herself into the discussion, the whole narrative changes. No longer is it a commentary on her life under the guise of a mystery thriller, but more of a simple pocket novel. To be honest, I liked this uh, book quite a bit. I thought it was pretty cool in how it handled uh, each character and their reactions to the horror. Like, of course, mainly Eleanor, but... I don't know, learning about where the characters and their behavior come from in Jackson's life is really... It really changes my perspective on the whole novel. It no longer, like I said, like it no longer becomes just a simple pocket novel, right? It you can really see why it's a classic and how well the characters are written because they are Shirley and those around her in her life. And I'm glad that I read it, but I was I was just excited to read something scary, not a uh, kind of realize how bad someone's life can really be. But yeah.